Hey guys, happy Friday and welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike and on today's episode, we are going to be continuing our nervous system series with an in-depth look at the central nervous system, more specifically the brain. While creating this video, I quickly, quickly realized there was just too much information I wanted to share with you guys on the brain alone. So next week we'll be concluding the central nervous system when we speak solely about the spinal cord. Last week we talked about the basic building blocks of the human nervous system. So if you missed that video, click the eye above my head to check it out. With that being said, let's dive in and get started. The central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord. We refer to these parts as central because they receive, interpret, and transmit all the messages to the body controlling every action your body undergoes, from moving your arm to releasing hormones to control of vital signs. The brain is the most complex human organ. Comprised of over 33 billion neurons, the brain functions as your body's main control center, where approximately 20% of the body's blood and oxygen supply is utilized. This light but heavy three pound organ is protected by the meningi layers within the human skull. Now before we continue, make sure to answer the question of the day in the comments below. How many pairs of cranial nerves does the human body have? Anatomically speaking, we divide the brain into two hemispheres, the left and the right. They are joined by a bundle of fibers called the corpus callosum that transmits messages from one side to the other. The theory that we have a rational left brain and an intuitive artistic right side is literally nothing but nonsense. Humans use both hemispheres of their brain for all cognitive functions. Brain imaging studies show no evidence of the right hemisphere as the focus of creativity and the brain recruits both left and right sides for both reading and math. The cerebellum is the largest part of the brain and separates the humans from the rest of animal kind. The cerebellum is where all of the humans higher function and thought processes are performed. It is divided into four lobes. The frontal lobe controls emotions, personality, concentration and problem solving, even some speech and motor function. The occipital lobe, which interprets vision, colors, light, movement. The parietal lobe interprets language and sensory information, as well as some spatial and visual perception. Lastly, the temporal lobes organize memory and sequencing, interprets language, and also hearing. Deep within the brain, there are two structures that need mention. The thalamus serves as a relay station for almost all information that comes and goes to the cortex. It plays a role in pain sensation, attention, alertness, and memory. And the second is the hypothalamus, which is the master control for all autonomic systems. It plays a role in controlling behaviors such as hunger, thirst, sleep, sexual response, and it also regulates body temperature, blood pressure, emotions, and the secretion of most hormones. The cerebellum, also known as the little brain, is located in the back of the brain and is responsible for controlling balance, muscle coordination, and muscle movement. The last major brain structure is the brainstem. The brainstem is made up of three structures, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. All three regulate and control most autonomic bodily functions. The brainstem is the lowest portion of the brain and connects to the spinal cord through the foramen magnum, or the large hole in the base of the skull. The midbrain controls vision, hearing, motor control, sleep and wake cycles, arousal and alertness, and finally temperature regulation. The pons controls arousal, respiratory processes, fine motor control, equilibrium, muscle tone, and the regulation of sleep. 
Lastly, the medulla oblongata controls many key functions of the autonomic nervous system, including respiration, cardiac function, vasodilation, and reflexes such as vomiting, coughing, sneezing, and finally swallowing. Well guys, that is a lot of information on the brain. Make sure to join us next week when we conclude the central nervous system with the spinal cord. In the meantime, stay safe out there and I will see you guys in the next video.